Hello, I'm Rhea Tregobov and I want to wish a very happy birthday to Turnstone Press and to thank you for including me in this celebration. I'm the author of All Souls and that has been published by Veikil Press. However, today I would like to read from my manuscript in progress and I'm afraid I don't have a title for it as yet. Uh, but there is a series in the, po in the book uh, about talking to strangers, and the first poem that I'll be reading today is from that series. It's set in White Horse, Yukon in June 2011, just about exactly 10 years ago now. The poem is called Talk, White Night. We're all strangers in the startling light of midnight. But we seat ourselves beside the young woman in the dim booth in the bar, talk about the light, the dark inside. The kilometers she's driven solo from Vancouver with her dogs sleeping in her van. She's fine, she says. She's safe with the dogs. She just needed something. A flinch in her mouth I catch to get away. Talk drifts to the hockey riots ten days ago when the Canucks lost the big game. Fans segued into mob, began their labors tipping porta potties, garbage cans, moved on to torching police cars, trashing pizza joints, then anything. Now, inside the bar's dull light, we watch 10-day-old footage on someone's phone, smoke rolling thick as silk on sidewalks the angry men own for a bit. I need a weapon a sweet-faced boy says, watching another crack his skateboard against a car. And it's work to break through the tough glass. When at last they win, watchers cheer, take trophy snapshots, videos, victory Vs, triumphant poses. There have been walls between them and what they want. Their team has failed, so now they'll take walls down, fill their arms with things they don't have or don't have enough of. I was there, the young woman tells us. She's a paramedic. That night she was out with the cops. The people she'd come to help hurt her. She pushes back her bangs to show the bruise. She's safe with the dogs. She just needed to get away. Beyond the windows, the sun broods over the horizon, not ready to go. And the second poem, also from this manuscript, was written after the death of my father. My family uh, lived in Winnipeg at the time, and I went with my two sisters for the funeral. And our family is Jewish, so we had wanted the day following uh, the funeral to visit the synagogue my father had attended and say Kaddish. The prayer for the dead for him. It's a very small synagogue. It was a weekday morning and in order to say this special prayer you have to have a quorum or a minion and uh, many many uh, congregations now uh, are egalitarian and include women but the the synagogue that my father had gone to was more traditional uh, and they required 10 men over the age of 13 in order to say that prayer. 
And so uh, with my sisters there, we did make ten, but since we didn't count, we weren't allowed to say Kaddish. And this poem is in the form of a villanelle. Kaddish. According to the custom, I recite the prayer for my father, though not to any god I know. Certainly not the god of the congregation, the synagogue I do not understand. Synagogue my father attended most of his long life where, the day after his funeral, my sisters and I, being women, are not counted for the necessary ten, so no prayer is said for him there. According to the custom, I pray for my father for 11 months as a comfort, carrying in my woman's purse the card given at the graveside with the words spelled out on it, carrying that paper till the edges wear. And though I do not understand them fully, I come to know the words with all my heart and with all my might, and I say them when I lie down and when I rise up, saying them according to the custom. I hear the gravel and earth of my father's own prayers for his father, his mother, his voice intoning Yiskadal made large and Yiskadash made holy. A large and holy prayer meant to comfort the bewildered living, meant to honor, even redeem, the dead. I do not understand this prayer beyond all blessings, hymns, praises, and consolations uttered in the world. By what means it comforts or bewilders or redeems and though, according to the custom, I pray for my father, and in congregation nod, Amen, I do not understand. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Entz and I'm honored to be a Turnstone poet. I'm also honored to be the person that is putting together this reading series. It's been such a pleasure getting to work with uh, poets across Canada and with um, Turnstone's very impressive and wonderful catalogue of poets. Um, today I'm going to be reading from my book The World is Mostly Sky, which came out in 2020 with Turnstone Press. This poem is called Broken Seals All Summer. By glass, I'm impossibly close. Try to read something in the glazed female face. Seven gorillas in all. A sign says, survival breeding plan. The crowd looks and laughs. Seven, a reference to creation, recite my friends returned with red palms. They'll live at least to 70 so long as they get real on health. I am interested in healing but the world's beyond it, the spectacular rotation found even in the spirals of our thumbs. We scroll images of Orca heaving her baby's corpse above waves. Seventeen days awake, take us, take up us. How to honor this looming knowing, offer evocation of wholeness, seven. Dance ocean proverb to dust, spit, bacteria growing legs to stand on, the shifting DNAs extravagant in despair. From our porch, worms strip sticky thread, the canopy infested, elms stretched white and ragged, I see a circus, squirming satellites, a womb collecting membranes delicate with dignity, pearled to tightly knitted bones. We text our doom, free bleeding, save seeds, crystal clutch. Of course, preserves won't keep horizon from shrapnel in the haze. Light and dark, water from water, the gathering of earth, seasons and stars, then moving creatures and beasts. 
our image. I hear it coming. And the second poem I'll read is called Communion. We turn to ritual, dyeing each other's hair in the bathrooms of the houses we house sit. We stain the counters, paint bruising the laminate. We do not make everything into a metaphor, try knitting. Accumulating mildew and fruit flies, we drink from mason jars left under a full snow moon. Push bare hands into gray slush and wash the car with it. A coyote running along the river stops to stare. How embarrassing, our howls, our tilting to sky. We splash the pinups by the bathtub, collages we clipped from old playboys, and replace them. Cut careful halos around their heads. We perform at parties and nail the lifts. Often, we open our eyes at night to see someone kneeling by the nightstand or curled in the closet. They are crouched and confessing. They are denying. They are grinning with small, sharp teeth. Upon waking, we conjure probiotics, brew and ferment. We search the carpet for claws the cat has shed, place them points up under our pillows. We find a little dead bird on the windowsill, bury it in the tomato plant. We sit around on the kitchen floor. A box of red wine and the mugs our mothers made us. We tell each other some of what has happened to us. Something has happened to all of us, our telling teaching us this. It helps to say it happened, to do this in remembrance. It helps to say, this body, this blood, to say, me too, me too. Thank you so much for watching.